You're listening to New Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ, Darren, and Pedro. Crypto note security vulnerability found by the Monero dev team. Tokens inside of tokens and prisms. Enterprise Ethereum Alliance adds 86 new members. All this and more on episode 208 here on Wednesday, 24th, May 24th, 2017. Darren? In the traditional markets, we have gold down slightly to $1,257.80. Silver's up to $17.19. Oil is up to $51.30. The Dow is down to, or no, the Dow is up to 21,012 points. And the 30 year old Treasury is yielding 2.923. Percent, and it's been a crazy week here on the crypto sure markets. Has. And uh, Bitcoin is up severely to two thousand four hundred and sixty-seven. And I would say the only thing going up faster than Bitcoin are Bitcoin's fees, but That's right. <laughs> but that w- isn't true because uh, um, we have Ethereum more than doubling, uh, c- uh, coming in today at one ninety-six dollars and sixty-five cents. Uh, Litecoin's up severely to, severely to uh, thirty-five dollars and ninety-nine cents. Uh, Dash is up to one hundred and forty-nine dollars and eighty-four cents. That's about a, that's like over a sixty percent gain, maybe eighty percent. Zcash more than doubles, and and part of the doubling was in one day to two two hundred and forty-nine dollars and sixty-nine cents. And Monero almost doubles to fifty-two dollars and oh six cents. So, I mean, the big question, we're going to jump right into it, guys, and we're going to, before we get to some of the news stories, let's just talk about this phenomenon that's happening here, and there's a lot of reasons why it's happening, and we talked earlier before the show, and, we, and one of the reasons is uh, Coinbase has, uh, what, what's uh, the top search uh, term or something like that? Yeah, Coin, Coinbase on, um, as far as uh, downloaded apps on iOS is in the top five this past week, so... There's a lot of people getting that app, a lot of people signing up for accounts, wow. and a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people are cashing out their crypto, but I think a lot of people are also now investing in crypto. So the floodgates are, are about to open with new money. So that's that's the thing, is there's so much uh, new interest. Now, we had talked about Japan had uh, put out some, the government put out some uh, uh, ruling about Bitcoin and it became legal, and then all of a sudden, you know, Japan's driving up the price uh, with Bitcoin sales, this was a couple weeks ago, and uh, then next thing you know, Korea is is all of a sudden Korean exchanges are are a much higher, are paying a, a huge premium for Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then you're looking at this this repeating itself all over the place. Now Australia has just opened up their markets too, so you not only do you have all of these different locations that are now okay, it's safe. The government has said it's okay to trade Bitcoin and and Ethereum. And there, there, there. People are just lining up left and right to be a part of this in in those areas, which is, of course, increasing the demand. And of course, the supply of Bitcoin. You can't you can't just pump it up whenever they want. They can't just go and print more bitcoins. So you know the, the natural effect is the price. But what baffles us with the price being this high, and it's 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 so difficult to use Bitcoin right now. Look at the number of transactions you're still seeing. Massive numbers of transactions waiting to get into blocks. Yes, confirmation times I'm sure are very high, just like the price. Right, the fees are very high, but, but yet the price continues to rise. But what I what I've seen personally in doing some Bitcoin transactions the past week is you, I got a transaction to confirm on the blockchain in less than a minute. Like I I broadcasted it and it confirmed in the next very next block. Now, I also paid the highest fee my wallet would allow and that was $4.88. So if right. you're if you're willing to pay the very highest fees, you can get your bitcoin transactions through. Um but, you know, those fees are high for small use cases yes. and that's where other currencies like dash and such are are going to Well, are, imagine are the fir- it. your first use case, right? So so let's say you you're one of those people who just downloaded the Coinbase app and you went and uh, bought yourself some, you know, linked up your bank account and you went through all this stuff and a few days later after confirming and you're ready to buy bitcoin, you've been waiting, you bought it and then, you know, you go to spend it and you're looking at the 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 either either a you mischoose the settings because you don't really know about the fee too much, right? So you choose a too low of a fee and it doesn't get confirmed. <laughs> or you choose too high of a fee and you're going, oh my God, I paid so much for that fee. But maybe these new users aren't selling. They're, they're seeing the price go up. So they get an account and they buy and more of them are buying. So the price continues to go up. Now, I'm not saying it's a bubble because I, I still think that crypto is a very small percentage of the world economy, tremendous potential to grow. 
but that's what's happening. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. I, I here's something I want to put out there, and this is this is perhaps um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm right here, but I think what we're seeing is we're we're not seeing the actual ramifications of Bitcoin's block uh, problem. We're not seeing them at all. We're insulated them because on all of the exchanges, that Bitcoin is not actually moving from one wallet to another one unless someone cashes out. So if someone trades Bitcoin and then um, trades into something else, those, those Bitcoins are still moving around on that on that exchange. So you have this, the exchanges are basically allowing you to circumvent the natural uh, issues surrounding the block size problem because those exchanges never actually enter blocks until someone cashes out. I, w- I would agree with that. So all this, vo- a lot of this volume, a lot of this exchange is, is happening on order books, right? And in, in databases and yes. in, in the exchanges. And to your point, they're not getting cashed out. So, which is a good thing because it's not hitting that, you know, the transactions that are already really high for Bitcoin. Right. So I, I think it, in a way, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in, later in the show about the many different ways that you can go and get coins. But the uh, the smart contract based exchanges here are like the only only honest exchanges we know about. Now that doesn't that doesn't factor in the fractional reserve banking basically that Mt. Gox was accused of doing and some other you know th- that people will like to point fingers at some of these exchanges because you're not on a blockchain between ex- I- I- trades. There is no real transparency. The beauty of Ethereum and smart contracts. Yes, so you you can see the you know the live you know, blockchain and Ethereum and see where these coins are, are moving and they're not being held in a central place that is maybe a traditional database. And, you know, if there's issues where they lost coins, I mean, you actually see all the value moving between smart contracts and, and wallets on, on Ethereum. All right. Well, Darren, uh, what's what? give us a story that you want to talk about today. What do you want to talk about? Well, I, I definitely want to talk about the salt Okay. The salt of the earth. Um, there, that is uh, in reference to a venture that Eric Voorhees is involved in. That, um, and I think this is actually huge. This is huge news, but it's not available to the public yet. So, um, but salt stands for secured automated loan te- technology or something like that, right? And what it would mean is that you could apply for a loan. You could get a loan. And secure it with cryptocurrency. You get a loan in your local currency and secure it with cryptocurrency, right? I, I don't understand. So um, if you've ever had a mortgage, that's a secured loan. It's a loan that's right. secured by the house. Right. If well, car, car loan, sure. same thing. So you, th- th- they're working on having an avenue where you can have your crypto recognized for its value by basically the banking system. Sure. And then the result would be that they'll give you a loan... With the uh, crypto as a collateral, okay. So, um, so what this is going to effectively mean, and this is wasn't in the article, is that it will allow people to short their local currency or, or the dollar or euro or whatever they want to, because you can basically take some crypto, get a loan for it, take that loan, buy crypto, sell the dollars, yeah, and buy crypto. You're shorting it basically, yeah. Buy crypto, you can then you can repeat, rinse, repeat. I just think. This is something that's going to make the market much more fluid and could quite drive up the price of all these. Th- I mean, not that they haven't gone up very much already, but right. I mean, this could really be a game changer because it, w- it would just allow uh, cryptocurrency. Oh, I need some money. Okay, I'll get a loan. Okay, I can pay back the loan. Okay, I got my cryptocurrency back. It, it just allows people to adjust their risk tolerance in a way where... Well, they could go. They could leverage it for these cryptos, and or, and they could also um, hedge as well. So it it just seems like this is going to be a big deal. Wow. Um, yeah. So so salt and and that Eric Voorhees is behind this. Well, he is involved. Okay. I don't know if he's a one person. Oh, I'm sure he's it. got other people working with him. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so can we talk a little more about? Eric and what he announced. Sure. sure, Pedro, what do you have? So there was consensus 2017 in New York City from Monday through end of day today and announced that consensus was, uh, so ShapeShift CEO Eric Voorhees uh, thinks Prism is a game changer for the blockchain ecosystem. So the new product they have, and I quote, Prism is perhaps the first commercial demonstration of the revolutionary power of smart contracts generally and the Ethereum platform in particular, said Voorhees. So Prism uses executable distributed code contracts, 
EDCC entirely on the Ethereum global network to generate custom management tools for portfolios. The platform eliminates intermediaries and the complicated process of storing multiple private keys and wallets. Prism may represent a paradigm shift according to Voorhees. Quote, gone are the days of trusting a third party with one's wealth. Prism digital asset portfolios built entirely on non-custodial smart contracts demonstrate a new standard in financial security. End and quote. That's, that's a, there's a key couple words in there, non-custodial, and I've been seeing this a lot more. And once again, if you don't hold the private keys, you don't hold the coin or token, right? So that the whole point of non-custodial contracts, which is becoming very popular, is that you are in control always, basically. And if you're not... Um, the, you know, the smart contract, there's no person in control. Either the smart contract is moving that money like it should, or you have the, the ability to pull it out, right? Yeah. So if you go to the shapeshift.io, there, there, you know, you can learn more about it. But essentially, it's going to work this, this way. So let's say you're a person and you, who wants to invest in multiple uh, Ethereum-based tokens. Well, today well, you... Yeah, but it's more than Ethereum-based tokens, isn't yes, it? Th yes. That's where the big thing comes in. Let's say I'm a person who wants to involve, invest in multiple blockchains, and Pedro didn't normally do this. I'd have to go and download the clients and install them and then... Learn them and, and you know understand how the, how the nodes work. And so a password that, for each one of them. You have to secure the keys for all these. Yep. So the game changer here is that just with Ethereum, and, and you go to Shapeshift, and you have your pris Prism interface... You can now say, I'm going to use these Ether to, as collateral to diversify into these other uh, cryptos, including different blockchains, to your point. Um, and then you can split them up. You can say, you know, a third, a third, a third, or, you know, whatever percentages you want. And it diversifies your crypto holdings. Um, now, there are fees charged for this. So the, there's a closing fee of 2.4% plus 0.5 Ether. And there's a monthly capital fee of 1%. Uh, every time you rebalance, there's a fee of half a percent. Now, for those that are very tech savvy, you know, maybe maybe you want to download those blockchains. But there are a lot of investors that they, they simply don't have the time to stay on top of all the different blockchains and how you secure them. So this is a good way that they could take, you know, their Ether and diversify into other crypto. So now, OK, so this this is not in a sense, you know, we, we, we've talked about in the past financial instruments and, you know, like mortgage backed securities, things like that, derivatives. But this is sort of different, isn't it? Because you're putting ether, you're putting something of value. Basically, you're you're putting your savings account, and it's it's like a it's you're taking your ether, you're putting it into a savings account that's actually a mutual fund of a basket of different currencies, basically. Yeah. That's, now, that's can you sell output. these prisms? I, and like, can you um, create shares of these prisms? Can you like? Well, my my understanding is it's only for you know, crypto that's already out there. So it's it's to diversify into other, uh, you know, other cryptos without needing to, you know, download. Right, what I'm saying is that, let's say I make a, uh, I, what I think, what I think, the, and I watched the video too, but what I think it is is that you can actually determine how many, like this prism, you put 100 Ether into it and it's diversified and all that, but you want four pieces of right. this. So like then it's basically quarters, it quarters the, the total value into four pieces that you can then trade and, and uh, sell, or you can cash out. Like you can, right? Isn't that isn't that how it works? Yeah, I mean, you you, you cannot you can cash out at, at any time and and change your portfolio. It, so so this is like a to your point, almost like a mutual fund, except that you control that mutual fund. Now there's a a broker out there called Motif Investing that does it similar with traditional securities. So you would open up an account. And you might and you can trade up to thirty different securities with one ten dollar transaction fee. So you can go in there and say, "Well, I want you know AT and T ten percent or blah blah blah." You you put those all in, and then you send money and transact, and they'll charge you ten dollars. And say say you send a thousand dollars, it'll divide that thousand into those thirty secure or up to thirty securities, depending on your your breakout. So essentially, you've almost created a, a mutual fund, except. You know, it's not regulated because you're not making money, so you don't need to be regulated. It's simply you. It, it it's facilitating what you can do today with traditional brokerage, except you're not buying them individually and getting charged an individual fee. Right. You can get up to thirty with one trade fee. Right. Right. So it's it sounds really you know interesting and 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 more than interesting. I mean, I, I use that word too much. I think. But it's it sounds like something that uh, a lot of the the people new to the idea of crypto 
would really find a lot of value in because of the fact that you're not investing so much time and time and energy and getting all these blockchains and setting them all up and holding all the keys and whatnot. Yeah, you're paying for the convenience. Right. So um, great stuff. Now, one other thing we wanted to talk to talk about that that was a, another news point was Fidelity, and we we keep mentioning banks and Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. Well, Fidelity is looking at offering their customers a lot more information about what's going on in their uh, bank accounts if they're holding any Bitcoin and Ethereum and whatnot. It seems like Fidelity is really on board with the blockchain technology. So that's uh, some good news there. But moving ahead with some other uh, really interesting stuff going on here. The, um, I'm sorry, the Monero team found a a flaw in the crypto note um, protocol, basically. So they they discovered that a critical bug, and this almost seems like a, 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 a like a hack, not a hack, but like a cheat code on your your favorite video game. So they found a bug that basically would allow you to make an uh, unlimited number of of that currency that was undetectable. What? Yes, and they found a way that you could take the crypto note and you could do this sort of thing, and you can have infinite money basically that no one even knows about it's, unless they search. They know how to search for it. It's a transparent blockchain. No, 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 no. I don't know. I that's 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 the difficult point. Is like, how do they create? I mean, I can understand how that would happen to Zcash or something, but I don't know. So yeah, I I don't know the exact details. But here's the here's the issue: is that this is a live, uh, basically a zero day is not really a zero day exploit anymore. But they patched it and they notified the other crypto note uh, blockchains and and uh, altcoins out there. And so several of, several of the altcoins did patch up, and they, they gave a deadline. They said, we're going to go public by this deadline because this is such a serious error. And so there are a few uh, currencies that are still allegedly affected by this issue. And I just want to mention, uh, so Monero patched it. And the other, we'll get to the other sneakier point. But so these, these currencies here, uh, to my knowledge, have not yet fixed this issue. And that's Bitcoin, Dashcoin, not to be confused with Dash. Pay not or the dash, same. not the same, and then a digital note. So uh, basically, what happened was they were really sneaky. They found this error and they snuck it surreptitiously, snuck it into a Monero code base and pull and a pull request, and it kept it secret, of course, to pr- protect it from being uh, used to attack other crypto note currencies. And then they uh, they got the exchanges to upgrade their software including this fix but they told them there was a uh, a dos attack a ring ct dos attack they just made up some bs reason why the exchanges should update their software and the exchanges just bought it yeah like, oh, okay sure yeah we'll do that well they snuck in the fix that way too um and then the, and then they had to prepare for a dynamic hard fork uh to increase uh, uh, uh not a dynamic <laughs> a hard fork to increase their dynamic bo- block size so there, this has all happened before the hard fork, and then once the hard fork took place, which has already happened, then they uh, in mid May they basically uh, feel like they're secure now. Okay, so they patched the problem, they hard forked, and now the the, the new blockchain, the hard fork blockchain, should be solid, right? Because they've already checked to see if these coins were made. They they knew how to find out if they were made, but otherwise it's undetectable. Which I don't understand how that could be with a blockchain. Darren, I, not not a transparent one, I, right? I mean, well, I mean, this is Monero, which is all about yeah, it's not, hiding. Uh, I mean, or I'm, I'm glad I'm glad they patched. Um, and to your point, it was a little sneaky way to do it. That's H- what I. Th- and now, this is the issue I have. I mean, H- however, if, if they came out public with the, saying that you know we have this huge vulnerability here, and this is why we need everyone to update, well, it's like a zero day attack, right? Because it's it's vulnerable until everyone does that. So I understand their. They're wanting to patch this and, and keep it secret, but they, like, yeah, they had to keep it a that secret. That was really sneaky, though. Two two sneaky elements. One, okay, now everybody now out there, now pay attention. Because clearly, uh, blockchain developers are able to sneak things past and into their code and then, you know, pass it off as something else. Well, I mean, you know, Monero is not... Bitcoin. I, I think if this was Bitcoin that was trying to sneak something in the code, there's <laughs> no, so many people. Bitcoin, that you would... don't have to worry about it. They're not going to change the code. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, but but if it's but a I'm very fine. like if this was Ether or or Bitcoin, there are so many people that do code review. I don't think they could sneak it. Uh, in in this is just my opinion. No, okay, but you know, it's, 
on one hand, yes, I'm glad that they fix things and they're letting people know and they're trying to do the right thing. But I, I need to just, as a journalist, you know, I need to point out that they did something really sneaky to get this done. So that's it. That's it. And, you know, it's not saying they're bad people. I'm not judging them. But uh, moving on. So Toyota is exploring blockchain technology. OMG. Toyota. Yes. I mean, so this also came out of uh, consensus. Um, so the Chris Ballinger is the director of mobility services and chief financial officer at, at Toyota. And he was quoted as saying the hundreds of billions of miles of human driving data may be needed to develop safe and reliable autonomous vehicles. Blockchains and distributed ledgers may enable pooling data from vehicle owners, fleet managers, and manufacturers to shorten the time for reaching this goal, thereby bringing forward the safety, efficiency, convenience, and benefits of autonomous driving technology, end quote. So the, the project is aimed at nurturing a digital environment where businesses and consumers can securely share driving and autonomous vehicle testing data, control car ride share transactions, and store vehicle usage information to reduce insurance rates. Additionally, Toyota is establishing a user consortium in hopes of inspiring, inspiring further adoption and development of autonomous, autonomous vehicle mobility services. So they're looking at a, a blockchain as a way to aggregate all of the driving data that's, that's happening uh, where they can, you know, get it from sensors is very similar to what Tesla did before they they rolled out their um, autonomous mode. Is they had all the sensors active, and what the sensors did was see what was happening around the car, and then see what the human did in reaction to that, and it, it helped them build up this huge amount of data, which then they used, you know, this NVIDI- Nvidia supercomputer right. to machine learn and and get all that. But w- one of the things that um, I remember that. Tesla had an issue with initially when they were just collecting the data was a soda can. So uh, they use radar, sonar, and visual cameras. Now a soda can, the bottom of the soda can has a concave. And if that's sitting on the road pointed at the radar, the radar thinks that that's the size of a small refrigerator, the way it bounces off that. So they had to get so much data and build in so much intelligence to say, well, if the radar says this is a refrigerator, but the visual and the sonar says it's a can, it's a soda can. Nice. Um, So this has great potential because, um, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of autonomous driving because I think it's going to save a lot of lives, uh, save a lot of money with, you know, fender benders. Uh, We're going to have cars that, um, you know, are going to drive better than your average human. That's coming. Yeah. Well, I, I hope so because some of these people are terrible drivers. Yeah, I almost got hit today. It was it's it close. But moving on, uh, uh, the what I see in the future actually, you know, I was you were you were describing the story and and I was thinking, oh well, your 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 car you paid for in Dash is using Ethereum to uh, navigate the the area. It comes up with a problem and it's about to collide with something, but it's like, super fast, so it, it hires Golem to do some some calculations. <laughs> Of uh, to simulate what 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 could happen in this occurrence and what what decision it should make, and by the time you know a couple of milliseconds later, it's got some answers and like oh, that chooses a path, and and you don't even know it. you're sitting there sipping your coffee because you're not driving in the first place. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sipping your coffee, coffee, and you bought with Bitcoin. Using, yeah, using oh, your by then it's it's worth a dollar. That or would be great if you could pay okay. for like a couple seconds with Gollum, and it was that. Right, that's what fluid. I'm saying. Like, no, what if it's all built in? And you're like, your your thing is like, oh, we got to deal with Gollum. So yeah. So if our listeners didn't hear, so uh, Gollum is a uh, a token that will allow, or should allow in the future, uh, users to pay for very heavy duty computational power. Right. It's 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 actually like a protocol built on top of Ethereum, and so there is you know some work done by the Ethereum uh, network, EVM, yeah. distributed computing. So, you know, that's that's sort of stuff. Amazing, amazing things happening. So um, let's see. Some more news here. Darren, you got another story for yeah, us? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. There was a, a lot that was going on. Let's see. I got two related stories here. JJ. What's up? Um, just a second. Um, the Ethereum Alliance? Yeah. Yeah, Ethereum Alliance. Alliance. Yeah, Enterprise so the, Alliance. The Ethereum Al- Enterprise Alliance now has 86 new members. They're all... There, I mean, many of them are are very big companies. It it just seems like Ethereum. But they lost going, Goldman Sachs. Oh, right. Yeah. No, they didn't. No, Goldman left. Did or, they? Or, or was it J.P. Morgan? It might have been. Well, 
I'm not sure if J.P. Morgan left, but they're also working with... It was um, Goldman Sachs. Okay, it was the previous episodes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, J.P. Morgan is doing something else on, on that blockchain. I don't think they've left. Yeah, so there's 86. Uh, you can look at our show notes if you're interested in which ones, but they're, they're, they're big. Some of them are big. And in related news, they announced that in June there'll be many more big companies announced. So it's, it's just steamrolling. It's just, yeah, it's just all the time. Uh, yeah. So, oh, and other news. I'm working for Dash. Da- what? 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 Darren? I'm working for Dash. You're working for Dash. I'm talking to the Dash people, and using uh, going using all the math stuff and understand the cryptography. What, what? What do you do for Dash, Darren? Well, I, um, I I like to think of my role as like a auditor. I go through what they're doing and see if it's going to work. And you, you um, make sure two plus two equals four. Yeah, make sure. And then if they think two plus two equals five, tell them that it equals four. Yeah. I mean, but there's a lot of cryptography involved, as you can imagine, and other things. So, um, so what, what? Do you have a title? What's your title? No, I don't really. Have okay, I, I don't need one. <laughs> Worker. Now, are you getting paid in Dash? Then I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I don't know. It's I, awful, awful mysterious. Are yeah, you like? It's, are it's, you a spy? Are you a no, Dash spy? No, no, I'm under NDA. Are you infiltrating the Neo Cash Radio? No, no, I'm under NDA, Wait. and so I can't tell you all oh, of the things. Oh, good, excellent. Yeah. Well, we're testing you because we're also under oh, NDAs. From, oh, you really are? Okay. From a different competitor. <laughs> That's kidding, fun. That would be so much fun if we were up here. Like, <laughs> all, all like paid shows yeah, for, I, I for feel other like, blockchains. I feel like I should say something to the listeners for like full disclosure, but I mean, I was into them before I started working for them. You know, the, the thing is, is we... I am in all the coins. Let me tell you, I, I'm not that. That's not to say I have all the coins or hold all the coins, but I am into most of the coins, not all the coins. Let's, let's, t- let's take a step back. So I am pro. I am pro uh, cryptocurrency, and I have there are certain reasons. And you know what? The thing is, is I tell people why I like them. I tell why why I, like, I think they have value, and that's the whole point: is what makes this valuable. And, and we've explained to you why we think Dash is valuable on the show. We've explained to you why we think Ethereum is valuable. No, we're not giving you advice to buy or sell anything. We're just giving you information and our views and, and ideas. So, and, so in other buyer news, beware. in other news, the Ethereum block, blocks, they're about full. There, there, there are a lot of blocks that are full. Now, now, full in the Ethereum network is different than full in the, in the Bitcoin network because the Bitcoin blocks are limited by size. But in, uh, in, in the Ethereum, all, every block has a gas limit. Right, and the gas limit isn't a hard and fast limit. It can change. You can look, and it'll go up in a little bit as time's going on. But there are a lot of blocks that are really close to that gas limit right now. Now, Ethereum has a gas limit, and they also have a fee. Yeah, the fee. Yeah, right. So, so it's the same thing. You you get to choose the fee that you're paying per gas unit. Right, and uh, it, the miners are more likely to include the higher fees. Sure. So it's 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 similar thing. It's just uh, I, I mean I actually think it's pretty s- in, smart, brilliant intelligent to to have a gas limit instead of a size limit but at the same time you can't be bumping up against it in you know all the time just like bitcoin's doing sure so i i I just feel like something should be brought up to our listeners so if you just go to i go to trade block and look there and you'll see a lot of blocks over four million gas and if you click on the block it'll tell you what the gas limit for that block is and uh i'm i i do not want to see these things uh, slow down. I do not want to see him come to a halt or anything like that. So, uh, I, I really, whatever Ethereum's doing, I'm hoping that they. Uh, well, you know, they are also preparing for the the move to proof of stake. So, if yeah, the if you look at the Ethereum, um, you know, the Ethereum difficulty, then you're 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 going to see that it's it's actually starting to go up pretty fast. So. The uh, the mining is still going on, and it's still you know there's still a lot of mining power making the Ethereum network very secure and and capable of handling all these computations. But you're right, it's you know something's going to happen. But then again, they're they're talking about radon, radiant, uh, radon, well, radon. Yeah, I mean, I've heard this story before. Let's yeah, say that. we've heard that from multiple different chains. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna come out with a solution in like three years. Just wait, just wait. Just and and wait. inside note, there's so we mentioned the token card ICO and the token card. Now there's a, there's a competitor called uh, Monaco. Now I just want to point out that Monaco's ICO is exactly like token cards. Yeah. Okay. Like I went and looked at it and investigated, you know, for Neo Cash, and I'm like, wow, this this is deja vu. Why would they do the exact same thing? They're not, they're saying all the same things and, and visa this that the other thing, and I'm like, 
I, I don't know what to make of it. So uh, it col- color me skeptical about both projects. So that one. There you go. Um, but anyway, so what we're seeing now is we're seeing blockchains, uh, other people mimic what's been successful, or mimic a lot of mimicking I mean, going on. These token sales, there, there's no backstop. There's nothing to really enforce that the tokens follow through with what they're doing. Nope. And so it's it's a really I I I would expect lots of scams. I I wouldn't be surprised if eighty percent of token sales are scams. Yeah, and and that's why I keep going back. If if you're if somebody is interested in in getting into these tokens, do your research. Look at the team behind it. Read their white paper. Make sure they have a good business plan. Don't just do it because you see the hype coming up in that coin, and you're like, wow, I can I can make some money here. Um, I mean, you can gamble that and try to do a quick flip, but I I really caution. Uh, you know, it's 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 very easy to create a token. It's very easy to, to register a website and publish a white paper. So just be careful. See who, you mm-hmm. know, who's behind the project, who are the developers, what's their track record, what have they worked on previously. And, and if you hold yep. uh, and you hold off and you lose up lose out on a 10 times gain, but then you bought the one that's still in business 20 years later, I think that's a better idea than buying before you even know what it well, is. Well, let's, let's be fair. I think 20 years from now, if it's not a quantum-resistant ledger, it's not going to be worth well, any money. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I, uh, that's part of my job. So, yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah, so it, there are ways to deal with it. And a quantum, if quantum computers come online, it's going to be a while to uh, before before they're strong enough to crack it quickly. Yes. If you use Bitcoin in the uh, in the what the use case was supposed to be, where you never reuse an address, never get money sent to an address that you have a spend from, um, then then uh, I, I'm saying Bitcoin's quantum resistant because the the addresses are hashes of the public keys, so the public keys aren't published until there's a transaction. I'm saying quantum resistant because basically the quantum attacker would have between when the transaction's broadcast and when it's confirmed to attack. Right. So it's 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 a very small window, and especially you you think if there's a quantum computer, the first ones aren't going to be that great. Maybe it still takes t- you know three minutes or to break the 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 key, or it could take like three months. You know, at the very first quantum computers, it's it's not like an off and on type thing. It's a it's a it's a, you know, it, the first few quantum computers probably will have like eight qubits or something. You know, it won't be some some huge uh, uh, computer that can do that. I think the break EDCSA you would need a DSA you would need a, a two hundred fifty six uh, qubits or something like that. Wow. I mean, to do it quickly. Well, moving on, and then let's talk about a currency that is definitely quantum resistant. We're talking about gold and silver. So we got yes. news out of Arizona here. That a, a House Bill 2014 went into law officially allowing Arizona residents to use precious metals as currency, which is amazing. But what's even more amazing from that, well, maybe not more amazing than that, is that it let the bill uh, now allows people to, quote, deduct the amount of any net capital gain derived from the exchange of one kind of legal tender for another kind of legal tender or specie from their gross income on their state income tax. So it's like it just null- nullifies any sort of capital gains tax that, right. that you might get from that. Good, because, I mean, capital gains tax on gold is kind of like a, a government-created price increase, and they're taxing that. You know, it's a tax on top of tax. So there you go. Like, uh, wow, imagine that you can actually legally use gold and silver in uh, Arizona. Can Do they accept it for property tax? Um, I imagine they they would have to accept it for anything if it's legal tender. Yeah, they would. So yeah, so that sounds great. So, um, any, guys, any, got any final stories you want you got to touch uh, on, Pedro? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we we could keep going here, but we we do need to wrap it up. I want to uh, close out with one, a um, couple more things, real quick. Uh, also, out of consensus, uh, J.P. Morgan's quorum to integrate Zcash. So JP Morgan's industry blockchain platform will, incorpor- will incorporate Zcash zero knowledge proof, bringing unprecedented privacy to blockchain transactions. Uh, so Quorum is a permissioned private blockchain derived from the Go implementation of the Ethereum open source public chain, altered to require a permission to join. Um, so really what, what can happen here is that you can do these transactions, but with having Z, uh, zero knowledge proofs, you can retain some amount of secure and uh, privacy of, of what's in that transaction. 
Uh, wow. So, so exciting stuff. So that means that J.P. Morgan is working directly with the uh, the Zcash development team. Right, uh, and, and I imagine with the Ethereum team as well. Yep. yep. And then one more quick thing. Um, tomorrow, May 25th in New York City, there is a token summit. Uh, so it's about, you know, a, a summit to look at the economics, regulation, practices around blockchain-based tokens, protocols, and crypto assets. So this... Uh, this is a very busy week in crypto news, um, so we'll have more news coming out tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, I had a very nice uh, Bitcoin pizza day uh, last Thursday. That was uh, the anniversary of uh, the first uh, Bitcoin sale or public Bitcoin sale for two pizzas that cost 10,000 Bitcoins, which what's that now, $20, 000, $20 million. Anyway, so uh, that was a lot of fun over and over, and, and I saw several advertisements throughout New Hampshire for B- Bitcoin pizza day celebrations. And also uh, wanted to uh, just mention that uh, the user user feedback, uh, we really appreciate it. There, I don't know, JJ and Pedro, if you saw that there was a feedback that our, our show should be daily and another one that our show should be longer. So it's, that's feedback we got. We really appreciate the feedback we get from the listeners. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yes, thank you so thanks. much. Well, uh, th- thank you so much for joining us in New York Cash Radio. Now, um, normally, you know, the show is, is a half an hour to an hour. We... If we go longer, it's typically because um, we just, you know, we just need to. We can't stop. But uh, as far as the links as the show goes, we just try to keep it open, right, Darren? Yeah, I mean, there's so much news this week. It's insane. It's it's just crazy. We haven't even talked about the the Bitcoin that's not doing anything. The Bitcoin that's not doing anything. Well, it's not. I mean, they they reneged on the reneging. That's. You know, it, 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 we haven't covered the core <laughs> news at all, or the Segwit, what 2 is, megabyte, 8 it, megabyte. Well, okay. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because this is Neo Cash Radio. We've talked about the future of money today, and the future of money is more than just Bitcoin. In the studio with you, it's JJ. Darren. And Pedro. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today.